to Greenbush Baptist Church. Is everybody ready to praise the Lord this morning? Yeah, yeah.
But, uh, you know, we pray for their safe travels. But I know a couple families are out and about since they lifted everything. Everybody scattered. Everybody went where they wanted to go. Uh, so let's remember them in prayer as they are on their way back. I know uh, two families in particular that are on their way back today. They should be back tonight. So uh, I told them, I said, you had to pick this time. <laughs> and you know what, church? They didn't even invite the pastor to go with them. Uh, but we're thankful that you know how many thankful things are getting back to normal. Amen. Well, here's what I want. Even though the government may release their thing, as we come into the tabernacle of praise, it ought to be unnormal. How many understand what I'm talking Amen. about? I think that we should let go, let loose, and let God have his way in our life. Come into this place and let's have church. Amen. There's no restrictions placed. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. Yes. This is your house. This is your people. And we welcome you into this place. Yes. There are people that came here with needs. There are people that came here for healing. There are people that came here just for a touch of your anointing power. And I said, devil, take notice. You've had us struck down long enough. Amen. Today you are going to notice a hungry people. Today you are going to notice some people coming into the tabernacle to say, we are not taking no, no more. We're coming in to lift up our hands, raise our voice, and give our praise unto an almighty God. How many is thankful for that in the presence of God today? Amen. Amen. For those of you that are, uh, where is, come up here. Yeah, you, come here. Devin. 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 Not you. Which you? Blue shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking to There's a few to use here. Where? Go in my office real quick. Oh, no, there's a, the offering. I'm going to have them come and receive your tithes and offering as they go into this next song. You give them to the Lord as you see fit, and I know that he will bless you for it. Hey. I gotta tell you this. What you do is your business. Keep your distance, you know. You know the drill, right? Alright. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be gathered in this house once again. Father, we ask for your anointing power to saturate every heart that's in this house. God, we ask that every need that's been spoken, every need that's unknown, God, you know the situation. God, there are some in the hospital right now. God, reach down to them right where they are. Comfort their soul. Give them peace and give them comfort. God, we ask for everybody that's here. God, let go and have your way in this house here today. Father, we ask for you to bless this offering. Bless those that can't give, those that cannot give for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And we shall never forget to give you the praise and the honor in your name. And the house of God says...
waymaker. How many can testify in this house that he's a waymaker? Amen. Amen. There's people in this house right now that I know that you have a reason to give praise yes. unto God. Amen. Otherwise, you'd already be in your grave clothes. You'd already be in the hospital. You'd already be in a psych ward. You'd already be in tons of other places. But God in his magnificent mercy says, no, this is my child. Back up. You can't have him. Thank God that he makes a way yes. where there is no way. Amen. In his shot. Amen. 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 Things are moving a little bit at pace as we slide back into things here. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you that has came out to the house of God today. It's good to see some friends that I've known a long, long time. We go back. We go back. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Amen. 20 years or so. And I'm glad that they are here and their family. Uh, we've had many, many, many great services together through the years. And it's just a joy to have them. And uh, I hope each and every one of you make them feel welcome and feel at home. Because you know what? We're God's people. And we ought to feel at home anywhere we are. Because if you can't feel at home here, how are you going to make it in heaven? Amen. 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 Turn your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. We're going to read a portion of Scripture. As we come into this thought here today, my thought for you today is a day to remember. A day to remember. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be gathered together in this house. God, as we call a solemn assembly for this people. God, we have gathered for no other reason than to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that as we deliver this word that we believe that you have given us to deliver to this your people. Father, that you anoint these lips of clay. God, in our most futile effort to deliver this word. Father, that it would fall on fertile soil. And God, every ear would hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church and every heart receive what the Lord has to give unto them this day. Whether they're in this building or whether they're out in media land, Father, reach out, touch, lead, guide, and direct the hearts and souls of people today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy, chapter 2. This is uh, the young whippersnapper that came up under the Apostle Paul. He's talking. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember. There's that word remember. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And as everybody here knows, we are falling upon Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. This is one of the most busiest weekends next to, I think, the 4th of July that we have here in America. Everybody finds a place to go. Everybody, like half our church is in another state. Uh, you don't realize how big families are until they don't show up. <laughs> you don't realize that. And then you look up there and think, you know, there's more of them folks than what you thought. <laughs> but thank God that they're enjoying some uh, good time and they're able to do that. As you all know, this weekend we celebrate Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend, the day that we remember those who have gone on before us. Today we honor those who have died in a battle to ensure that the freedom that we celebrate as Americans is inscribed. Today we also remember our late fathers, our mothers, brothers, sisters, and friends. We remember the fond memories that we had of those loved ones. Many will have family reunions this weekend. Or they'll go off to Tennessee, one or the other. <laughs> Many will go to cemeteries and decorate burial places with brilliantly colored flowers that look awesome and beautiful and bright and vibrant. And many will spend the day in a quiet remembrance of the frailty of life. Today I want to encourage us to also remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we remember those that have gone on before us, we remember that He has gone to prepare a place for us. There are four important things in today's message that I want to bring out to you that the Bible tells us about Christ we can remember on this Memorial Day. On this day to remember, we can remember, number one, remember Christ's provision. Matthew 16, verses 8, aware of their discussion, 
Jesus pointedly and poignantly asked the question. He said, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Did ye not understand, neither remember the five loaves and two fishes? And I like how he summed it up. And the twelve baskets that remain. See, we ought to remember Christ's provision. When you're talking about pastor, I'm talking about the provision that he has made for each and every one of us here today. There are people represented in this house today that I know that if I pass this microphone around, you can give a testament and an account as to the provision that God has made upon your life. In some way or some fashion. One, that you're sitting here of your own free will. You walked in the door today. Nobody pushed, prodded you, pulled you in, came in on crutches, wheeled you in a wheel. You walked in on your own two feet. That's a provision. Yes. That ought to be a blessing that you hold dear. There's a lot of people sitting today that don't have that luxury. There are people sitting in places right now that would give anything they have to be in your place and to come into the house of God the way you came in here today. That's a provision. We ought to lift up our hands and lift up praise and say, God, thank you. In the midst of all this trial, in the midst of all this turbulence, in the midst of all of the uncertainty that is going on in our country today and around the globe, Father, I'm glad that your hand of provision has been laid upon me and my family. I'm glad that we have not been struck down. I'm glad we have not become ill. I'm glad that we have not been uh, laid in a bed somewhere. And that, but thank God I can breathe oxygen to fill my lungs. You have breathed the breath of life upon me. God, I'm coming into the house of praise today, and there's nothing that I'm not going to do except this. I'm going to give you the praise that's right to be yours because of your provision upon my life. We take that so so uh, irrespectively of what it actually is. Well, it just hasn't hit yet. What do you mean it ain't hit yet? You know what we need to be hit with? <laughs> we need to be hit with an all-out experience of the anointing of God upon our life, upon our church, upon our family. Why? Because God said, I've already laid the groundwork for your provision. The only thing you have to do is reach out and take it. All you have to do is reach out and say, it's rightfully mine by divine purpose and right. God, you sealed it upon those two timbers uh, when you held between heaven and earth. Uh, and when your blood struck the ground, uh, my provision was sealed for eternity. There's nothing hell can do. There's nothing the enemy can do. When it comes my way, I back them up and I say, no devil, not today. You cannot have my children. You oh, cannot have my house. You cannot have my household. You cannot have my husband. You cannot have my wife. God, my family, my house, my children, my church has been a lot of people. It must be a true holy So take your hands off of my family and let's have church in the house of God. And that you clap your hands. Not getting it, if you will. He pointed the question and said, don't you remember? I've sealed it. I've made the way. And sometimes as we as the children of God, we come in and we, we get a hangnail. Well, I don't know if I'll be in church Sunday. <laughs> My pinky hurts. Look at that carry wing foot that's swinging and hurts. And this is my son, Hush. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? She clipped my nails this morning. <laughs> she did. Thank you. You're a blessed man. I am. Amen. But the position's already there. He pointed away, and he's asking the same question to the people of God here today. What are you talking about? You're in a financial crisis, in a financial reverse. Even though for the past 10 or 12 weeks we may have had some pretty big problems within our household and within our jobs and that, I don't care. Who do you say is your provider? Jehovah Jireh, you are my provider. My health, my wealth, and my provision is not laid upon the government of the United States. My health and my wealth is not laid on anything my employer can bestow. Come upon me. My Bible tells me that my help cometh from on high and my help cometh from the Lord. The only thing I have to look up is say, Daddy, I'm a father. God, I need bread on the table. I need sustenance. I need you to restore unto me your presence. 
When you come in here, it's mine for the taking. Amen. Then Jesus reminded them of how he provided for them. And he asked, don't you remember the five loaves, the five thousand, and the baskets full you gather? Here Jesus is reminding them that he will supply their every need. He is sufficient enough to take care of them in any circumstance. Just as he had done in the past, he will do in the present. I think many of us need to be reminded from time to time of the provision of God. No matter what the need is, he is able to handle it. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he writes, But my God, everybody say, My God, my God shall, supply shall supply all your need. All all your what? Needs. Oh, so that means when I want something, I can go to him and just say, I want this. No. Is that what he said? No, needs. Oh, oh, I will supply all your needs according to what? His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It wasn't just a promise to the church in Philippi. It was a promise to the church of God at Greenbush Baptist Church uh, up here on Edgington Road on Sunday morning in May 25th, 2020. Right here today, that same promise, not in there, comes alive <laughs> in you. Can you say amen? Amen. <laughs> What's he talking about? Well, I'll tell you a story real quick. There was a person that I know I'm not going to mention names because some people here probably know them, so I'm not going to do that. They come up to me and said, Pastor Mike, I've been praying for two months about this particular subject, and I cannot hear the voice of the Lord. I said, well, what's going on? Are you sick? Is somebody in a Is somebody in a hospital? I don't know nothing about it, so can you tell me? And I'll agree with you in prayer. I may agree. That's what you're supposed to do. Agree in prayer and let's go get it. So we come out and he goes, well, I don't know. I've been praying for two months. He goes, I was watching every Wednesday. I watched religiously. And I knew this wasn't going to go in a good spot. What are you talking about? You watch religiously. He said, well, he goes, I pray to God every week that when they call out those numbers for the lottery on Wednesday, that my numbers pop up. He said, I've been praying like never before about this. That's what he's talking about. He said, you know, when you ask for things like that, you ask amiss. What are you talking about? He's talking, you can't pray for stuff like that. He said, I will supply your needs. He didn't say, I will supply all your foolishness. <laughs> foolishness. What are you talking about? Well, most of you know uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, I was hit by a semi-truck at a red light. And it destroyed my car, it totaled it. And I was doing nothing but sitting out of it, like my, my own business. I heard the horn, then I felt the horn. <laughs> so it ruined my car, it destroyed my car. So I went on, I had to borrow my brother-in-law's truck for a while, because you know how insurance purposes work, they think they're under, they're not in a hurry to do anything. So uh, this went on for about a year. Finally, uh, the attorney's office settled the suit. They come out to me, and I had been shopping for a solid year. For the truck that I wanted. <laughs> and I continued shopping. <laughs> and we were at the car lot one day, and I said, Honey, baby, sugar, sweetie, dear wifey, look, ain't it pretty? That's what I want. Let's go look at it. Let me just touch it. <laughs> so I walk over. Pick out my thumb here. And I start going like this. I'm going to wipe it with the diaper. <laughs> <laughs> so I turn around. Terry, we're on the show. We're in floor. I said, that's the truck I want. Terry walks over. Looks at the window where the sticker is, you know. Turns back to me, you are out of your <laughs> mind. <laughs> I said, that's what I want. I probably got it, that's what I want. This truck that I looked at, I'll give you a little background. It was on the showroom floor, had everything I wanted, totally decked out. It was a Dominion, black, 
Tinted windows, everything that you possibly want on the thing that got eighty-five thousand dollars. My accountant did not agree with my request. So my accountant looks at me and says, you need to go back to the altar and keep praying. And this time be a little bit more reasonable. See, what was it? See, in me, in me, it was everything I desired, which I'm not going to lie to these people. It was. Would I take it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's what I wanted. But what happened? There's a, there's a sense of rhyme and reason here. God said, you know what? Something of yours was taken away. It wasn't your fault. Something was stricken from you and taken from you that I blessed you with. You know what the word of God says? Nothing that the enemy, the enemy cannot take nothing from you that God has blessed you with. You understand that? The only way he can is if you lay down and let him do it. So all of a sudden, I began to pray, you know, and all that was in a joking manner. I understand that. So I said, God, you know what the intent of my heart is. You know what I really want. I said, so, God, whatever you want, just let me hold on until you can bless me with what you intend for me to be blessed with. And all of a sudden, me and another buddy went out to look at something else, and it was a rust bucket. We went to look at something else, and it was blowing black smoke when I turned the key. But they made it sound so good, at least. Huh? They made it sound so endearing. It looked good in the picture. It looked good to the eye. Oh, well, they're like, well, they're there. I'm going to back up on that. <laughs> so all of a sudden, here it is. I said, God, I'm, you know what I'm doing here. I, I really want this truck. So we walk over to Holman Motors. And you know where that's at, right? Nice place. They got nice cars. Uh, walked over there. We were on the lot. <laughs> Started walking around. Why did I bring that one? <laughs> so then I walk over. This vehicle it's sitting down here. If you, want sit, if you want to look at it, it's sitting back there. I walk over to it. I looked at this truck. Looked at it. They had writing on the windows and stuff. Apparently this truck had just came in. It wasn't even on an inventory yet. It was a trade-in. Some older gentleman had one owner had this truck. Never hardly drove it. Kept it in a garage. If you open the door, you can, my wife's right there, you can ask her. The seats are so pristine, they've never been seen. You've seen it. They had never even been set in. The back seat of this truck had never even been touched. The only seat that's been set in is the driver's seat. That was it. So this, uh, they told me about it, and I, he said, well, I can't give you a price that's not been on our inventories yet. I said, so I guess that means it's free, right? <laughs> they did not agree with me. So we began to pray. I said, God, if this is it, make a way. So I walked in. He said, well, tell me what you're willing to pay for. I said, okay, I'll write you a check. <laughs> so here we go. I told him what I'd pay for. He comes back, come back $500 more. All right, figures. All right. So here's what we'll do. You do this, 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 and this, and I'll write you a check right now. He goes, deal. And what was it? Here's the thing. Was it exactly what I wanted? No. Was it my provision? Yes. Was it more than what I thought I would get? Yes. Did I still get yelled at? Yes. <laughs> my personal accountant tells me, uh, that's a couple thousand dollars more than what we agreed upon. I said, well, you know, sometimes you just got to take the plunge. I said, I had to act in faith. I preached this stuff. I got to live by it, baby. You have to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I was made provision for with something more than I thought. That's just like God. What you've been longing for, what you've been praying for is nothing in comparison to what God will actually give you with. What is it? I could have got something and stuck in a uh, five, 
$600 a car payment. I could have did that. I had the option to do that. But no. So what do we do? We walk out blessed beyond measure. I don't owe anything on anything. And God says, now, look at the testament that you have. I blessed you more than you could even have been blessed by any other measure. Why? Because you held on. You waited. You waited for the answer. Why? You just didn't rush out and do what you wanted to do. You waited upon my hand to move at this specific time. Amen. There's many of you in here that can do the same thing and have the same testament. How many agree with that? Amen. Say yes. Yes. Is this good? Yes. If it's not, be quiet. <laughs> Number two, remember Christ's love. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love without he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit, mm, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Jesus. Because of his great love for us, we know what love really is and what it's all about. What are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about this. There is folks sitting here today that have recently been under medical procedures. You could have been stuck out, tucked out, and in your grave days ago. Complications could arise. Many people that went in the hospital with this COVID-19 that they just suspected to be treated, released, and sent back home never had that option again. They never saw daylight again, and they're in the grave today. You don't know what's around the next corner. Amen. You don't know what lies for you. But all of a sudden, here it is. As we begin to pray, the people of God, uh, there's others that I can mention, but I'm not going to. We visited you in the hospital. We prayed the prayer of faith. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, the doctors say all hope is gone. One of them in this house, I went to visit them in the hospital with their stepmommy. And all of a sudden, there were tubes on her all the way around. Terry was with me. We went into the emergency room. The, the nurse pulled me aside and said, Pastor, you need to pray for him. They normally don't do this. You know that. She says, you need to pray. You need to pray like never before. I said, why is that? She, they said, this person is second by second. Second by second. It's literally that bad. I looked around. Terry, am I telling the truth? There were tubes plugged into her from this side all the way around her bed, all the way to this side, was on a respirator, was on dialysis, nothing was working, all the organs were shutting down, there was no brain activity, nothing cognitive, and the nurse says, you need to pray. So what did we do? We silently played right there upon that emergency, and it was so bad they had people in her, you know how this works, they had people in the emergency room in that little queue that could not go treat anybody else, they were stuck just to her. That's how great the situation was. We pray. And because of love that is unmerited, uncompromising, and unwavering, he reaches down and he says, you know what? I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. I've heard your request. Now here's what I'm going to do. Because of my love for humanity, because of my love for this person lying here in this state, I'm going to move my hand. The provision is coming. The love is going to be displayed. And what's going to take place? Is it so that the pastor can say, well, look what the prayer is? No, but this is what it's for. It's so that the glory of God will be revealed one more time. Something is going to come out of this beyond your comprehension. Something is going to come out of this uh, beyond your understanding. Then all of a sudden, we were in there with one of the sons that was in the waiting room. Didn't really want to talk to me too much. Didn't want nothing to do with church or pastors. Or, and right, you get that a lot. And I understand that. All of a sudden, he comes up to me. As I come by, he takes my hand. He says, starts breaking down in tears. Cannot even understand or talk. Uh, and then I heard under his breath. He said, thank you. Thank you for doing what you did. And I reached down and I talked to him and I said, it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with anybody standing in this room. 
What it has to do with is somebody agreeing and saying, you know what? I am holding on to everything that I've got. Devil, you're going to have to go through me to get to them. You're going to have to go through my prayer. You're going to have to go through my supplication. You're going to have to go through me to get to them. Period. And when you have a per when you have two people that has that kind of mentality, guess yes. what? All of heaven is dispatched at your disposal. All of a sudden, angels are standing on the deck of heaven with their wings spread, waiting for the answer. For go, let my people know that I'm still in their presence. Oh, I am yeah. still God. I am still the healer. I am still the anointer. I am still yeah. the baptizer. Yeah. I am still the Holy Lord. Yeah. And I don't think I'm by myself. Oh, yeah. I think there's somebody else in this room yeah. that feels the glory. Remembering Christ's sacrifice. Number three. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take thee, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink in remembrance of me. Because of this sacrifice, our every need is met. Because of the finished work, it seals the deal. All of our material needs, our spiritual needs, and so much more. He meets the needs of our physical bodies. What are you talking about? How many in here has ever been healed? Ever? Amen. Who has been sick? Who has been in the hospital? Who has been pronounced dead? You see what I'm saying? He provided the provision. What's a day to remember? A day to remember is to remember, Lord, you didn't keep slack. You did it for me also. You know, it's good to come into the house of God and to hear testimonies how God has moved upon people within the house of God. They can give their testimonies of what he's done. But it's another thing when you can stand there and say, I am one of them. Yes, it's another thing to stand there and say, let me tell you my story. See, you know why, Lisa? Because there is nobody that can tell my story the way I can tell my story. Amen. I know Amen. where I was. I know where I was. At. I know where I was headed. I, I knew the best of it. But all of a sudden, now, God reached down and grabbed me and said, Listen, I called you. I've anointed you oh. for a purpose. Oh. And what I started in you, I'm going to finish. Yeah. And you all of hell may come this way. I may have to pull you from the gutter. But guess what? Oh. My word is going to come alive. My word has been established uh, from the beginning of the end. Uh, and what I've started in this people, what I've started Amen. in this church, uh, I will complete. Amen. Amen. There's some of you that have been knocked down where even the very closest ones that you would even call friends have slammed you to the stone. But God said, hold on. Who cares what they think? Amen. Who cares what they do? Amen. Who cares what protrudes out of their mouth? Do you believe what they say or do you believe in what my word says? Amen. I've started it. There's people that have slandered your name to the core. Why do you not? I know because I'm one of them. Was it my church people? Yep. <laughs> Was it my people that I called or considered friends? Yep. What was it for? It only made me stronger. Amen. It only made me hold on a little bit tighter and said, God, I did not come here to be mocked. I did not come here to lay down in defeat. I did not come here so the enemy can smile and say, I've won. I've beaten you. No. I came here to rise up as a giant that you called me to be. Come hell or high water. 
victor. I'm still victorious. I'm not a victim. Devil, you may think I'm a victim. Everybody else may think I'm a victim. But you called me unto righteousness. You sent the anointing. You sent the provision. I am a victor standing here in the house of God. And nothing that happened to me can change it. Amen. I mean, agree with that? Amen. Am I speaking on you? This first floor off for a reason. We said it was, you know, for social distancing, but actually, I guess it's the only one in the bath. <laughs> See, you know, these new teeth, they make me look pretty. You know? <laughs> but they also make me spit. <laughs> this is live, man. <laughs> Let's regain our composure. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Can we edit that? <laughs> Jesus commands us to remember him. We are remembering his sacrifice. We are remembering his love. We are remembering his provision. We are remembering his broken body and his spilled blood. Number four. Remember, this is the best one. Remember Christ's return. Revelation 3.3. 3, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour. I will come upon thee. In this passage, the church, the people, us. This was the church of Sardis that he was talking to. That was being addressed. They are being told that even though they have good deeds, they've done great things. They did it all in the name of Jesus. They had a reputation for being alive. But they're dead. Why? When they are told to wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. This was a church that at one time was on fire for God and made their priority his priority, his priority. But they've lost their fervor. They had decayed. And what even remained was dying. And Jesus was saying, wake up. Why should you wake up? There are churches all across this globe right now that are being filled by multiplied thousands of people for one reason. After what the world has just witnessed, people are searching for hope. They're searching for an answer. They're searching for cure for their desperation. They're searching for something on the inside where everybody else has nothing but negativity to say. Death is imminent. You know, we're going to get struck down. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. You can't go out there in groups of people. You might get sick. You know what? When I was a kid, we used to get sick all the time when I was growing up, you know? And here's what happened. When I used to get home, uh, sick, I'd have snot running through my nose. You know, you look sick. You look sick. All of a sudden, mommy does this. Comes up. Feeling. You got nervous about me coming up here. She comes up, takes her hand, you remember that? Knocks the snot off your face, says, Get dressed, we're going to church. It didn't matter we said, did anybody else get sick? I don't know. Probably not. Mm -hmm. What happened? Are you going to let something control you? Amen. 
we're giving. You know what kills me about this? Is we will let any reason whatsoever keep us from the house of God. Well, it's raining. You ever notice that when it rains, the attendance goes down? You ever notice that? Rain. Snow. Johnny's got a cold. His nose is running. So the whole family has to stay home because Johnny's nose is running. That's not the way it used to be. It's the sick that ought to be in the house of God. Amen. It's the hurting that ought to be in the house of God. If you've got sickness in your house, get me to the place yes. where I can get the provision. Get yes. me to the place where I can get under the anointing. Get yes. me to the place where the power of God falls. Get me to the place where everybody agrees at the same time and says, you know what? We're not taking sickness for an answer. We're not taking death for an answer. We're not taking this week because mommy is going to be out of town. Who do you serve? Mommy? Or God? Amen. Come on. Where does your blessing flow from? God. Well, you just don't understand. <laughs> yes, I do. Grow up, put your wine, stand tall, Amen. and be the child of God that yes. you have been called to be. How many agree with that? Amen. Remember his return. So what we do today as we go into this weekend of remembrance, probably later on this afternoon or tomorrow, I'll be going over to Goshen, Ohio. I'll be walking into Myers Cemetery and I'll be laying something on the graves of my mama and daddy. I'll be remembering them. I remember them every day. But I will take the time out this week to honor them for who they were, what they were. What were they? Well, they must have did something, right? Because we're standing here today. What was it? Their constant remembering of who he was. Was there many times that mommy and daddy didn't know where I was? Yeah. Was there many times that I made them Stay up late wondering about me? Yes. But every time that I come home, guess what I found out? Mama praying on her knees. God, keep your hand upon my baby. I gave them to you at birth. Amen. The rest is up to you. They remembered. They didn't let go. And as we remember all of those that have gone on before, let's remember the one who is soon to return. Amen. Amen. Don't be caught sleeping. Don't be caught slumber. Let me say this. I, I, I feel to say this. Would it be a very sad thing for you to miss the return of Christ because of someone else. Amen. Wouldn't it be a bad thing to say that I wasn't there? Because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hold on because they didn't hold on. He said, I made every way possible to move to yours. As much as I love them, Lisa, they can't take me to heaven. As much as I love them, what they do and whether they like me or not, whether they support me or not, or anybody else for that matter, it does, it's kind of not to a hill of beans. Because when it comes down to the scene of things, it's up to me. There are people that are sitting under that 
message today that's saying, you know what, that's me. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I feel that preacher. Pastor, I feel those words. What is it? That's the anointing of God pulling and saying, you know what? Laziness. We don't have time for it. Lack of desiccalness, complacency, idle words, evil thoughts. We don't have time for it anymore. We can't come into the heart to church and just play these church games anymore. We have to come down to the reality. This is what it's about as we remember here today. Amen. So as they are getting ready to sing this song, I want just to reflect down in the recesses of your being. Lord, I remember I may not have been faithful. I may not have done the best in my life. I may have let go of a few things here and there, but I remember every word that has ever come out of that book. I remember every sermon that I've ever heard the preacher say. I remember God pulling at my heartstrings. But right now, today, I want to make a covenant. God, I want to return back to that for which I am remembering. Before it's eternally too late. I don't want to be caught as a thief in the night. But God, with all this uncertainty that's going on, I want to know for a surety that if I don't take my next breath, the next one I be will it be in your presence. Because, folks, when it comes down to it, that's the only thing that really matters in life. Doesn't matter what house you have, doesn't matter what you wear. Doesn't matter who likes you, doesn't matter who don't, doesn't matter how talented you are, doesn't matter who it ain't. What it matters is, where do I stand with you? Amen. As they play this, I want you to bow your head. Right where you are at the media bill. Heavenly Father, I've heard the message that was given. From your word. Father God, I admit all of my frailties. I admit my sin. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Lord, I ask that you come into my heart, come into my life, and be my Lord and Savior. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am that whosoever. From this moment, come, live in me. And as they sung earlier, breathe upon me. God, I give you my heart, my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That I shall forever remember in Jesus' name.